Hello you guys, welcome back to another video. Today is an exciting day. I actually bought a new car and it's right there. I'm pretty pumped about it. As you guys know, we're having a kid. This is a dad car. So it's a Subaru Tribeca 2008. It's got seven seats, which is pretty cool. It's Subaru, I love Subarus. But today, what I'm gonna be doing is swapping out the display screen. Pretty much everything on this car was perfect, except for this little display screen was broken. So today I'm gonna be swapping to a new display screen that I bought off eBay that will hopefully work better. We shall see. First, I'll give you guys a little walk around of the car. It's a sweet looking car, pretty nice. It's got a little roof rack, which I think I'm gonna get better crossbars, but then I'll be able to put the rooftop tent on this car too, which is super cool. It's got really good tires on it still. Inside, I've already got a base for our car seat, and then it's all leather seats, which is super nice. There's the back, two more seats fold up from underneath that blanket right there. But yeah, just an all around good shape. So here is the screen which I popped out. It went right up there, and this one isn't working. It like occasionally displays a little bit, but it's mostly broken. And then here's the new one. Looks identical. I hope this will solve the issue. One tough thing about Tribeca's is they didn't sell super well. I'm not quite sure why. I think the first two years of Tribeca's looked pretty terrible, but this is a 2008, which is the third year, and I think it looks a lot better. But it's got a great engine, they're super reliable, so I feel like they should have sold better. One of the downsides of that is it's really hard to find anything on YouTube or online about how to like fix things yourself. So I kind of had to figure this one out on my own. I'll show you guys what I've done so far. So this little thing behind it, right there is where the screen went. To get this off, all I did was took a little screwdriver and put it underneath all the edges and there's little clips to pop it out, but it's super easy. And then this actually is only connected by one little connector right there. And then behind it, there were three individual screens. So there's this one which shows like if doors are open or not. There's this one which shows airbag info and security info. And then this one is like the main display screen and that's what wasn't working. I just removed a few screws to get basically these off. And then there's one screw behind each of those screens and then two screws down here to remove the, the main screen. So now what I'm gonna do is take this screen, the eBay screen, plug it in and see if it turns on and works correctly. If it does, then I'll know that that was the issue and then I can reattach everything. If it doesn't work correctly, then I'll be back to the drawing board trying to figure out what's going on with this. Okay guys, screen is connected. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's plug in the key. Hey, I think it's showing stuff. Yeah, welcome to Subaru, audio off. It all looks great though. Let's see if I turn the audio on. It's showing info. That's great. It's fixed, so now I just gotta put it back together. There's the one, two, three, four black screws that connect this piece in. Now I just need to put, there's two silver screws that connect this side in right there and there, and two that connect this side right there and there. Screws are all in, one, two, three, four, those are all silver ones for the side panels. And now I just need to pop this piece back in. And it's just little clips to pop in, so it's super easy. Woo! There you have it, all done. And now just to double check. It works. 
Woo! Guess what they call me? What do they call you? The Fix It Guy. Bob the Builder. Woo! Fix It Felix Jr. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Clint. I fixed a car. You happy about that? <laughs> Alright guys, hopefully that was fun or informative or something. It was super easy. I think I paid 50 bucks for the screen off eBay and I used two screwdrivers and that's all you need. Good visual. Thank you. <laughs> I got one flat head. And one star head. No, that's Phillips. <laughs> you know. I thought we were just being annoying. <laughs> I got a flat head to pry the thing off and then a Phillips to take off the screws. All in all, super easy. It's the kind of car fix I like. Good morning, you guys. I wanted to show you how I make the world's best fall drink at home. I don't know if it's the world's best, but I don't drink coffee. I'm also pregnant and this just tastes really good. I'm gonna show you how to make a pumpkin chai latte. It's basically pumpkin milk with like this much chai because pregnancy. <laughs> so start with some almond milk, whatever milk you desire. Put some in your cup. I normally fill it like that much. And then I take the Trader Joe's chai mix. This stuff is super yummy. It comes with a little scoop, but I only use about that much right now. <laughs> what is that, a quarter? Maybe a third of a scoop? If I was making a normal chai and I wasn't pregnant and like being very aware of how much caffeine I was having, I would do at least half a scoop for this size of cup, but this is good for me right now. Also, I'll take this, this is the coffee bean vanilla powder, and I barely add any of this. Tiny bit to make it sweet. Just a little. Bloop. To sweeten her up a little bit. If you don't like vanilla chai, then don't add that part, but I like my chai is more vanilla-y instead of spicy, so I do that. And then I take this little whisk thing mix. This is so much easier. I used to try to whisk this by hand and the powders just don't mix in very well. If it's cold, if it's hot, you can mix it by hand like it's fine. But when it's cold, this thing is a game changer. So we got a pretty color going on there. We're gonna add some more milk. I just like mix it in with less to start with just because it seems to be easier to mix. About there, mix a little more to combine. <laughs> and then here's the secret ingredient, you guys. This stuff is so delicious. I had never had this before. This was a new find this year. In years past, I have used the pumpkin almond milk drink from Trader Joe's, which is really good. It's not like sweet or anything. It just kind of adds a pumpkin flavor, which is kind of what I thought this was, but it's not. This is a creamer, but it's dairy free and it's pumpkin spice and it's so delicious, but it is very, very sweet. Do not need very much of it. The first time I made this, yeah, I made a terrible mistake and I used way too much. I had to cut the whole thing in half and like add way more milk. It's so good. I only pour this in for like three seconds. Whoop, like that. Mix again. You can top off with a little bit more milk if you need. Ice. And one for the puppy. Do you want this? There you go. I do three little ice cubes. Mix her on up. Mmm. So good. If you think it's not sweet enough, you can always add more of the pumpkin creamer. If you think it's too sweet, add more milk. But this stuff, seriously, game changer. So delicious. All right, you guys, we're gonna end this video here. I hope you enjoyed. I know it was kind of a random conglomeration <laughs> of cars and food and whatever. That's our life. Those are the random yeah. things that happen during the day that aren't us sitting at our computers, mm -hmm. living monotony. <laughs> again and again every day we're losing it anyways if you like this video give it a thumbs up for us make sure you're subscribed share our channel with your friends if you want to i don't know yeah do it mm -hmm. all right you guys are great and we'll see you next time bye bye well okay wait start over okay let's see so i don't know what the... oh my gosh why can't i get this little Every time I burp, I'm scared I'm gonna throw up. Just pregnancy things. I'm fine. <laughs>